don't think there's any hype for this. Like, I, like, one of the things I wanted to get across is this is a really cool machine and this is something to be hyped about. Yeah. But I'm I hyped don't about feel it. any personal hype for this. And that's entirely because all the hype we had for Bigger, Better Machine went to the H2D and then it burnt it. And now there hasn't been that ramp of what you want. And now we're looking at a comparison because comparison is the thief of joy where previously if this machine came out first, it was the X1 versus what we now know is the X2, you'd be oh wow, this is amazing, this is so good. Now instead, I'm comparing the X2 to the H2. And I'm looking yeah. at them, and I'm going, well, the X2 is actually one nozzle less, and it doesn't look like it's got a window, and it's lo- it, it might have lost like the multi-material so- features. And it just feels kind of dampened on a machine that if I was doing it before then... I would have been raving its glories for ages just because I'm comparing it against the wrong machine. So it would make sense to me that Bamboo is going to cut the X1, right? It would make sense yeah. to me that they're going to cut the X1 carbon. It's going to go away from their system. They've like, if this is the case, they've already stopped production, right? They've already stopped yeah. production and then they're just going to maintain a certain level of parts they'll maintain you know whatever inventory of machines they have left and then this will just take over if it doesn't take over its price point's going to be really weird and it's not going to make sense right because mm. it can't be more than an h2d hd's two thousand dollars next one carbon as an american i can't look at the prices because i don't know if they're tariffed or not right now and you know what i think they're yep. back down in price honestly the it changes by the day these days but i would assume this machine's probably going to be in like the 14 to 1500 dollar range us pre-order if they do a kickstarter which i doubt they will but if they do a kickstarter probably at a thousand bucks but maybe 14 1500 you're saying okay so it, it's a thousand yeah. pounds so yeah like it's what, a thousand four, pounds like 1400 uh, us this might be without tariff or not I'm not entirely certain. Saying one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars is okay. the the base. No no AMS, just the base machine, X1 carbon one point two five. Are we assuming this unit is bigger than the X1? Based on the leaked photo, we know that it is. Its Z axis is three forty. Mm. Now it could be two fifty six by two fifty six by three forty. But we did have someone in here that said they have seen this machine in person. Now again. Mm. Grain of salt, I don't know who this person is. I can't corroborate any of the evidence. If they wanted to email me further evidence, they're welcome to. But from that leak and that person saying it... Yeah, they're it, saying it's... It appears the machine volume is about 20% bigger than the H2D. So I, is, I did the math on it. It's about yeah, 20%. The claim is 360 by 335 by 340. That is the current claim. Yeah. That would put it roughly the same dimensions as an H2D, the same build plate as an H2D, just mm. a single head. How many people will get pissed off they bought the H2D for a larger bamboo if this comes out, is larger, is cheaper? I think a lot of them have enjoyed the multi-nozzle system, mm. right? The dual nozzle. I don't think a lot of people are really messing around with the laser too much. I'm sure there are some people. I'd be curious to know the numbers on those laser sales for the H2D. Or more specifically, since I'm sure they're able to figure it out. Mm. How many hours the lasers have been used on H2Ds? Will they be upset and say, oh, had I known about this, I would have waited? Mm. I, I think it's going to be contentious. There's definitely going to yeah. be some ruffled feathers. And it all depends on what the price point is. Because that yes. the cheaper the price point, the more feathers are going to be ruffled. Yes. And that is where it's going to be, let's call it a spicy moment for Bamboo Lab, where they might have lowered the price to be a good product, but accidentally pissed off their current, their, their current customers. So, again, like in British pounds, uh, the H2D is 1,600 and the X1 is 1,000. So there's only a 600 pound difference which is not that much when you consider the amount you're gaining to go to h2 if they just replace the x1 with the x2 it's insultingly cheap in a way yeah, I, that I, you like i would buy it instantly at that stage me, like, because of the price 1250 pounds would make sense right yeah. like 1250 for the x2 pro or whatever the heck we want to call it would, would yeah. make sense to me which puts it at like 1500 us i think and that makes you know, a that, lot more sense. Like, I do think yeah. this machine, because it's bigger, 
should be valued higher than the X1 series. And but will it replace it. the X1? Right? Will will they stop production on the X1? I would say it all depends on the flow rate of the nozzle. If the if they are coming standard with a high flow, I would have stopped production on the X1. If not, I would have kept production on the X1 because they do something different. Now there's one unspoken benefit of making a higher flow machine. It's one of the reasons we will always give high flow because the customers that come to us also come to us for filament. We don't make filament, we just resell it. And the faster you use filament, the faster they buy more. So having a high flow nozzle as your default is a very good thing to add in a base machine because they're going to come back for more filament. And Bamboo Lab sell their own, they make their own filament, which means if you have doubled your flow rate, they are consuming twice as much material per unit of time. They're going to buy more material from you. Right. And I'd say that is what will determine if they cancel or continue with the X1 is about the flow rate of the X2. Because if they... Well, think of it. We're in a board meeting now. We're around the big wooden circular table. You're at one head. I'm at the other head. And then I come to you going, hey, we've got a bigger, faster, better machine that will double filament sales. It's slightly more expensive than our last machine, but it's better in every way from a finance point of view to a not. You're going to cancel the one that's not earning as much money. Just just straight up. You're going to cancel that one. And I think that is going to be the decision factor is it's not the size, it's the speed. If this is the X2 Pro, if they don't stop production of the X1, which they may not. I think this is going to land somewhere in the $1,500 range, I think just right. under the H2D. If they do stop production of the X1 Carbon, $1,250. I, th I think you're right on that. Like, it's close enough to the H2D that I could even, like, make an argument it will be priced the same as a H2D. You have no. a divergent path of single no nozzle chance. bigger, dual nozzle smaller, though I don't think they would do that. I think they would make no. it cheaper because... At the end of the day, people are going to see two nozzle versus one nozzle, and they're going to go, oh, it's a cheaper version. Even though the real selling point is size, they're just going to see the, the head complexity, and they're going to justify the, the quality of the machine based on that. I they do might. think the 1500 or like £1,250 mark, it, it's what I think they would go for. Personally, I would like to see them not stop the X1. I think smaller machines still have their place. Everyone needs at the end of the day, like, a bank of machines. And if those yeah. machines are twice the size, you can only fit half the amount in. So yep. there's still that use case for let's have smaller machines. What is interesting is that this is possibly called the X2 Pro, meaning we might be seeing, like, a, a P2 or something coming it, out it would, where it, would it make is sense. no side panels. Well, like, if we're following with what they've done previously with the X1 Carbon and then the P1P, yes. this could be the same way where there's the X2 Pro with the side panels and everything's done and then the X or the P2 where they're just like, yep, just pop the side panels off and you're done. And then lower that by another 200 bucks and then you've, again, you've capitalized on the large format market. And, and all you're doing is you're reducing, you're reducing cost and you're reducing assembly time, right? So you're, mm. you're saving the two major things that add to the cost of a main product. Well, I mean, let's compare it to a single tool head XL, right? Single two head XL is what fifteen hundred bucks, twenty five hundred yep. bucks. I don't know off the top of my head, but and that is already not an expensive machine in my eyes for the complexity of that machine. Well, it's single tool head, right? It, it, yeah, but the tool heads in reality they're not the expensive bit. They, it's the assembly, production, manufacturing, quality control. It's all of that adds up. It's two thousand. And the 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 type of per oh that then that is better. A single tool head XL is the type of product that Prusa probably knows they're not going to sell many of because people are buying it for two tool heads oh, or three I, tool I, heads. I bet they do actually sell quite a few. Anyway. I bet they do. People just want a bigger Prusa, right? That they, is also they, true. They want to maintain the same ecosystem, but they have the opportunity to add two, add five. Right? That is the value of something like the XL is you can get in bed with an XL for 2000 2500 bucks, spend smaller amounts of money, but then upgrade it to be a two tool head or a five tool head or, or yep. whatever you want it to be. Like Prusa allows that. Now, are you going to spend more money than doing it all up front? Yes, obviously. You know, I, I love my XL. It has been a reliable workhorse in our in our factory. It is not fast, right? It has issues with cooling that I still think need to be resolved. And there are some community mods to do it. 
I'm wondering if if Bruce is going to look at like kind of allowing or adopting those community mods. But otherwise, my XL is absolutely bulletproof. Yeah. Um, I can literally click print. I don't even have to watch the first layer. I just walk away. And it has been an amazing machine for us. But it's nowhere near, nowhere near as fast as modern. I'm going to put air quotes around modern 3D printers. Mm. But when you compare a four color print on an X1 Carbon versus that same four color print on a Prusa XL, the Prusa XL wipes the floor with it. Mind you, it's double the price but it will do it in like a quarter of the time. Yeah. Because you don't have the purging, the heating up, the cooling, you don't have any of that crap. You're just 15 seconds for a nozzle change and purge and you're done. Mm. Right. You know, I'm starting to think that with the price, the aggressive price point of Bamboo Lab, there's almost a market for people buying brand new Bamboo Lab machines, ripping out the motherboards and re- building them on the same hardware. That's where Big Tree Tech comes in with the Panda Cyborg. Yeah. So they're already doing that with the X1 Carbon. They will be releasing a fully, you know, a, a full conversion kit that is new boards and everything. It's funny because like, you know, we look at like this leak, 10 bucks, 10 bucks says this is deliberate. Because if you think that this leak isn't deliberate, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. This X2 Pro, whatever you want to call it, leak, it's deliberate. It's the same strategy that Apple does. It's the same damn strategy. Uh, but it is deliberate because it things like this happen. Bamboo is smart about this. If there's one thing that I think that Bamboo has done that separates them from everybody else in this industry is that they actually know how to market. You know, we we sit here and say, how can we how can we do right? into the people that are going to enter this industry.